Today we're going to review some of the basics of Octave, which is a free version or clone of MATLAB. So let's start with something simple like variables. X equals 3. So we've stored the number 3 in the variable x. y equals 4. Notice the semicolon here suppresses output. But if you look up here, x and y are both scalars. 1 by 1 is a scalar and has value 3 and 4 respectively. So for example, if we say z equals x plus y, z is 7. And just to be sure what the value of y was, display y. So this will display the value of the variable y. That's 4. <clears throat> okay, so variables are pretty straightforward. Um, they're not super interesting. They might make formulas a little bit easier, if you, especially if you have a lot of variables and you need to change some of the values. <clears throat> More interesting and powerful are arrays. So let's um, clear our values. Notice all the values disappeared here. <clears throat> and let's let x equal zeros, 1, 5. So notice x is 1 by 5. That's one row and five columns. When I say 1 by 5, there's something more general going on called a matrix. So for example, if I say M is equal to zeros 2 by 2, that's a 2 by 2 matrix. <coughs> and you can put values in there. You could say M of 1 comma 1 is 3 m of 1 comma 2 is 4, m of 1 2 comma 1 is minus 1, m of 2 comma 2 is 0. So now we see we have our value m. <coughs> Octave and MATLAB really are designed for matrices. For example, if we say n times n, we get a new matrix. But notice we didn't multiply 3 by itself or 4 by itself. Matrix multiplication is a, a little more complicated than that. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to uh, x. So x is a list of five numbers called an array. So we can store values there by saying x of 1 equals, say, 2. <clears throat> so what that just did is it, in the first position, position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, position 1, store 2. Suppose in position 5, we store negative 1. Um, and position 3, Let's store the number 5. <clears throat> All right, so let's display x just to make sure what we have. And this is x. x is an array with five elements. Notice this does not mean x times 3. It's more like a function, like f of 3, the third number in the list is 5. <clears throat> okay, so let's see what we can do with our um, with our array x. So one thing we could do is we can say 
y is equal to x plus 1. Notice what we just did. We added 1 to every element of the array. This is a great shortcut. In many computer languages, you would have to program that with a for loop. And we will get to that soon. <clears throat> um, we have two arrays now. We have, let's see what x is. And let's see what y is. OK, um, we can multiply the two together. x times y. It gave us an error, which means it doesn't know how to multiply in the way we're asking it to multiply. That's because it thinks of them as matrices. And multiplying matrices is a little bit more complicated. So what we want to do is call the pointwise multiplication, x dot multiply y. So see this little period here? This means look at each element and multiply the two together, element by element. See, this is what we wanted. <clears throat> 2 times 3 is 6. 0 times 1, 0. 5 times 6 is 30. And then these will zero out, as you can see. Negative 0, that's OK. It's still 0. <clears throat> All right. Um, x, z equals x plus y. It knows how to do that without trouble. And it just added every element of x to the corresponding element of y. So for example, let's display x, display y, display x plus y. <clears throat> just added them column-wise. 2 plus 3 is 5. 0 plus 1 is 1. 5 plus 6 is 11. Uh, so let's store that value. z equals x plus y. And let's put a semicolon here so we don't get the output. If we want the output, we can see it by just displaying it or by looking up here. And we can see the value of z. Array, a one-dimensional array. <coughs> with five numbers. OK, <clears throat> what can we do with z? We can, we can try to divide z. Doesn't like that. How about dot divide z? So that works. Notice the output was rather bigger than expected, so it had to use um, a few lines to output it. If you hit the up arrow, you can go back and see all your previous commands. That's a nice shortcut. So let's try this again. One dot divide will do the operation on each element of the list. And here we have our, uh, our list. It fits on one line now. <clears throat> say we want to raise it to a higher power. So let's see, here's z again. z dot caret 2. So the dot caret is raise each number in the array to a power. In this case, the power is 2. So notice that it's simply squared each element in the array. <clears throat> All right, so z is a array with five numbers. And if we ask Octave to tell us, what is the fourth number in this list? The answer is 1. 
what is the sixth number in the list? Well, there is no sixth number in the list, so it gives us an error. <coughs> now, we can add a, a sixth element to the list by just saying z of 6 equals, say, 4. Now notice we have four elements in our array. And in fact, if you say z of 10 equals 2, it will make sure the 10th number is a 2, and it will fill in missing zeros so that the array has length 10. <clears throat> OK. So that's what uh, an array is. There's some useful things you can do with an array. You can take the sum, and it adds up every number in the array. You can take the max. What is the biggest number? The min. What is the smallest number? So those are useful, those are useful uh, functions on arrays. Okay, now arrays are best accessed through what are called for loops. So let's review a for loop. So for i equals 1 to 10, display hello. And four. All right. So what did we just do? We wrote a little for loop, and it simply repeated something ten times. You could do this a thousand times too. It doesn't really matter. Um, the computer will do it very fast. I starts at one to ten. There are 10 numbers between 1 and 10, inclusive, including the 1 and the 10. So for loops are, are very useful. But this is not a particularly illuminating example. u equals 0. Four i equals one to ten. U equals u plus one. Semicolon and four. The for loop just did something. Let's look at the value of u. The value of u is equal to 10. 